presence in this place this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you fill the atmosphere, that the train of your robe fills the temple, Lord. We are desperate for you this morning. We are desperate for you this morning, Lord. We cry out from our hearts this morning, holy, 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 are you, Lord God Almighty. We thank you that the earth is filled with your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Can we all go home? <laughs> amen, amen. Um, just the kids quickly. If any of you kids have phones, please leave them with your parents because, yeah, otherwise you don't concentrate. Sorry, that was just a quick announcement. Amen. And then the kids can be off, please. Thank you. Go and enjoy Sunday school. It's great to have you guys worship with us in the morning. Um, quick announcement. Uh, Anton and Corey are here next weekend. Um, we can put the post up. Sorry, Jason's in training. Um, so Saturday again the, at 2 o'clock on the 17th of June. I know it's a, lot, it's a long weekend. Those of you, Chad, just bring I've got a bit of reverb here, Chad, please. Um, I know it's a long weekend, so those of you who are not going away, it would be great to have you with us. Please invite a friend. Thank you, Erica, for inviting a friend. Amen. Give Erica a hand. Did you get a free cappuccino? Did you get one? Please give Erica a free cappuccino for bringing a friend. Amen. <laughs> so you bring a friend, you get a free cappuccino. Bargain. <laughs> So Anthony Corrier next weekend, please join us. Um, and then quickly, on your way out, there's some little Gateway Revival Church cards on the back of them. There's a scripture. This one says, For the Lord your God, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. Deuteronomy 20, verse 4. There's five different ones. So there's one. You can hand them out, go and evangelize, and use these to invite a friend. It will work, I'm telling you. Good evangelism tool. Amen? Amen. Sorry, Harry, what's that? Oh, goodness. Sorry, guys. Okay, the other dates are wrong. Saturday, whatever the day is. Next week, Saturday, and next week, Sunday. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Um, has anybody got a prophetic word for us? Please come up. Uh, the mic is that one. There we go. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? <laughs> so I heard the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Judges 6, verse 26 to 29. Gideon destroys his father's altars. So Gideon went with 10 men who were his servants and did just what the Lord has told him to do. Though he did it at night because he was too afraid of his father's family and the leading men of the city to do it during the day. When the leading men of the city got up early the next morning, the altar of Baal had been torn down, along with the Asherah that had stood beside it. And the second bull had been offered on the altar that had been erected. They asked each other, who did this thing? When they looked into it and asked around, they concluded, Joash's son, Gideon, did it. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord is saying, it is time to destroy the family altars of generational sin that is keeping family in bondage. I saw specific assignments with specific instruction that is keeping the presence of God not to burn on his sacred altar. And like Gideon, I even see physical objects that God is going to show you to be destroyed. But in other areas, I see God even giving you prophetic words in your mouth to prophesy over family members and prayers of repentance to stand in gaps of generational sin. And even where there is fear involved with regards to generational altars, 
that needs to be destroyed, I hear the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I will give you a special grace in this area. And even like Gideon that went in at night to destroy the altar because of fear, I hear the Spirit of the Lord is saying, the outcome in this area will have such an effect in the spirit realm that it will have an immediate effect on family members' hearts of grace and repentance, even turning back to other family members. Judges 6 verse 30. Bring us that son of yours. He's going to die because he tore down the altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah that stood beside it. But Joseph's response to everyone who was opposing him, do you really intend to fight on Baal's behalf? Do you really intend to rescue him by ordering that whoever fights him will be executed by morning? If Baal is a god, let him fight for himself. After all, it was his altar that was torn down. So that very day, he named Gideon Jeroboam, that is, let Baal fight, since he had torn down his altar. Gideon's father did not kill him, but extended grace to him. And so I hear the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I will offer you the same grace in this season. Now go and ask me, what is the family altar of generational sin that needs to be destroyed? And like I've even seen an angel of the Lord with instruction to Gideon, I will appear to you with the same instruction. I call you mighty warriors. The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Do not fear, for I am with you, says the mighty Lord of hosts. Amen. 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 That's quite a word. Amen. Lord, I just pray for that extended grace, Lord. Lord, that those generational altars that the enemy uses to hold us back, Lord, that you give us the strength to identify them, the wisdom to identify them, and the strength to break them down. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 It's so good to have you all with us this morning on this wonderfully cold winter's morning. Those of you who were on Wednesday night, or Thursday night, sorry, that night, those of you who were here that night, that faithful night, where the presence of the Lord was in the house, I really feel that the Lord is speaking to us in the season to draw nearer to Him. So it's those sort of family altars that block us and stop us and make us overthink things and hold us back from really seeking his face. That last song that we, that we sang, that church is called Jesus Image. Michael says in, in, in a song that we sang in pre-prayer, see his face. See his face. Imagine his face in front of you. He's yeah. He's yeah. And he wants to break down every stronghold. He wants to break down every demonic altar. He wants to make a way for you where there seems to be none. Where some of us have given up. He is your strength. He is your strong tower. And he will fight your battles for you. We sang that song. I'm going to see a victory. Can you see it? Can you see the victory? The enemy wants you to see the failure. He wants you to see that you can't get there. He wants you to see that there's no way through. But Jesus says, I am here and I've called your name. I will fight your battles for you. You do not need to fight them alone. But you need to stand up today and you need to see his face. The train of his robe filled the temple the lady with the issue of blood pushed through the crowd because she was desperate for him she touched the hem of his garment and she was healed wow I can feel the presence of God in this room today 
Will you be desperate enough to push through everything that the enemy has put in front of you? Will you be desperate enough to push through the crowd, to push through what people are saying, what people have said, the demonic words that are holding you back? Will you be desperate enough to push through? Because the train of his robe is there and he's available to each and every one of us. But will you be desperate enough to push through the noise and touch the hem of his garment? The only thing that holds us back is us. The only thing that holds you back from receiving all that God has for you is what's in between your ears. It's your own mind. It's available and Jesus says, I am here. I am here. Just push through. It's not the end and that's the word of the Lord for you this morning. I am here. And it's not over. Amen? Amen. 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 God is good. God is good. Bless his holy name this morning. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. You are Alpha and Omega. We bless your holy name. Luke 11, 1 to 4. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he ceased, this is Jesus speaking. When he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say. Can we all say this together? Can we stand? Can we stand for the, for the reading of God's word? Our Father, who art in heaven together. Who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone who is deadful to us. <laughs> and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Most of us know the, the, the extra and the add-on from a pre- previous passage of Scripture. But for today, that's enough. Amen? You guys can take your seats. Verse 5, And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Won't you give me a tissue, please? Give him as many as he needs. Verse 9. So I say to you, ask... And it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. So what do you have to do? You have to ask. You have to seek. And you have to knock. Can we say it together? You have to ask. You have to seek. And you have to knock. Verse 11. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, that's us, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give to you through the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I know there was a lot of scripture this morning, but I need to, get you, I need to give you a picture and a, co- and a context. The parable that Jesus teaches us through prayer actually shows us what the posture of the church should be at midnight. He says that the guy came at midnight, in the midnight hour. Midnight is a type and a meaning of the coming of the Lord. And that's what I want you to see it in, in the context of today's scripture. Midnight being a type of the coming of the Lord. Midnight means that our Lord Jesus Christ is on the very verge of coming. The picture we see is the posture of the church knocking at the door saying, we recognize that we do not have bread. Who is the bread? 
Jesus. The name that is written all over the wall, literally. Amen. Thank you, Lord. When we do communion, we recognize that Jesus is the bread of life. We did communion last week. We had our communion service. And when we partake of that communion, we recognize that Jesus is the bread of life. That's why we partake of the communion. Jesus said, this bread represents my body. Partake of it in remembrance of me. We can never have enough of him. We can never have enough of him. Jesus, we know that we need more of you. More of you in the midnight hour, not just for me, but as the scripture reads, but I have friends coming and they are on a journey and if I am not full, I will have nothing to give to them. If I am not sold out to you, if I am not sold out to Jesus, you won't receive what I have. What I have. If I'm not sold out of Jesus, you won't receive what I'm carrying. I'd be empty and I'd have nothing to pour out. If you are not full of Jesus, you will be empty and you will have nothing to pour out. We as a church and as children of the Most High God, you and I need to be like this man that comes in at midnight and he comes knocking on the door. Doesn't matter what time of day it is. You need to be knocking on the door. I want you to put that clock up for me quickly. The first nuclear weapon was built in 1945. Two years later, in 1947, artist and bulletin member Martel Langsdorf created an iconic doomsday clock to signal how close humanity was to self-destruction. Today, the doomsday clock is located in the bulletin offices in the Keller Center, home of the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. The clock has been moved throughout the years. The hour hand has been on midnight for many years now, and the minute hand has been moved over the years. As war raged, as the world seems to self-implode, the minute hand's been moved. And as you can see on this picture, I couldn't actually find the new one, but I heard from a very, 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 very reliable source that that has been moved. They voted, and they moved it from 100 seconds to 60 that picture from January 2022, there's the, the news came out in, I think it was last month, or it could even have been the beginning of June. But that they've moved the minute hand to 60 minutes, 60 seconds to midnight. The scientists and chemical warfare experts established the clock as a countdown to doomsday. As the world comes closer and closer to midnight. And these are taught men. These are, these are, these are the brains of the operation. They voted and the clock was moved. So I'm asking you this morning that what should the position of the church be this close to midnight? Do we all recognize that Jesus is going to return back to this earth? If we believe in the death and the resurrection, then we should also believe that the book of Revelations says that he shall return. Do you believe it? Are you ready? Do you have bread? Do you have bread? Are we ready? There are two examples of prayer that I want to give you this morning. And Jesus taught us, there's the Lord's Prayer, which we we just read. This came first. It's preschool prayer. It's about our personal needs. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. My bread for me, for today, for enough. My bread. Today, give me enough for today. Give me enough sustenance for today. Give me enough to get through today. We drive to school every day. My kids, I was asking one of them, both of them this morning, they were a bit shy, to come and say the Lord's Prayer because they know the words off by heart because we pray it every day. Every single day. They pray it. The Lord's Prayer. Because it's for this day. For today. Tomorrow will worry about itself. We need to ask for today. The New King's James Version of the Bible says, Give us day by day our daily bread. Day by day. 
Can I tell you this morning that God delights in meeting our needs? God delights in having our, us having houses, having places to stay, having cars, having fuel in our cars, having money in your wallet. God delights in that. God doesn't want us to have um, not enough. God delights in having our needs met. A loving father doesn't want to give you a stone instead of bread. He doesn't want to give you a serpent instead of meat. God wants us to search for him, to ask him for more provision, to ask him for manna in our desert places. God wants us to ask him. God wants to meet our personal needs. Look at what Jesus is showing us. Once we have our personal lives straightened out and we have bread and we have a relationship with Jesus and we are eating of the bread of heaven and partaking of communion in faith and washing, we are washed and we are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, God wants you and I to move into a higher position, to increase in our faith in the midnight hour. We don't want to be a church that, that, that just has enough. We don't want to be a churchy church. We don't, and I'm being real. We want to be a church that's desperate for the presence of God. Our hunger attracts the rain, guys. Your hunger will attract the rain. How desperate you are for Jesus is what's going to bring a shift and a change. Our desperation is what God is requiring from each and every one of us. God wants us to move to a higher level. It's time for us to stop eating of the milk and the crumbs of the table. And it's time for us to start eating solid food. It's time for us to start eating meat. It's time to grow up. It's time for the church to stand up and grow up. When the midnight hour is upon us, we cannot be casual Christians anymore. We can't be Christians that act and speak Christianese on a Sunday morning. But you walk out of here and you're a totally different person. You're going to be the same in here and you're going to be the same behind closed doors where nobody sees. You're not going to see me standing up here and then see me drinking in the pub. Never. You won't see it. It'll never happen. You can't come in here and proclaim to be somebody. And act a certain way. And then meanwhile, behind the bush or at home, it's a different story. We need God to change us here from the inside. Every day. It's a process. It's not going to happen. Well, sometimes it does. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that. But sometimes it does. Sometimes it happens suddenly. You can, you can literally just turn around. Boom. Done. Finished. Clap. Other times it's a process. We like onions. We, we have layers. I love Shrek. Amen. <laughs> onions have layers. Ogres have layers. That's what Shrek said. Um, but there's, there's appealing. And God, God won't do it all at once because my, my, it might even break you. Because those things might be so engrafted into you that if God comes and, 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 and severs it, yeah, you'll fall apart. It will be over. Unfortunately, and, that's, and God knows. God knows where you are. He knows what you're dealing with. And layer by layer, layer by layer, bit by bit, piece by piece, line upon line, precept upon precept, God will come and he'll, he'll, he'll tear it back. And, he'll, and it's not fun. It's not fun. There's a molding. Remember when the potter molds the clay? That clay needs to be pressed and squeezed. If you think about wine, when wine's made, those grapes need to be crushed. There's a crushing that comes part through the process to, for it to turn and turn into wine. There's a crushing that needs to happen. Sometimes we need to be pressed. Sometimes we need to be crushed. We cannot take these things lightly anymore. We cannot only give the Lord a little bit of our time. We can't live on the faith of our forefathers you can't just live on the faith of your parents or the faith of your husband or the faith of your wife. Wives, you can't rely on your husband's faith. Kids can't just rely on their parents' faith. We cannot stand on one another's prayer altars at the midnight hour. You're going to have to stand on your own. You know, we will stand alone. When that day comes in the midnight hour when we stand, we won't be standing next to our husbands and our wives. You're going to stand there by yourself. And he's going to ask you. We can't play games anymore, guys. 
Is he going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant? What's he going to say, I didn't know you? Because it's easy to come and stand in here, but do you have a relationship with him? Do you know his name? And more importantly, does he know you? Does he know you? We need to make sure that we're ready. We need to make sure that we won't be left behind. We can't sit here on a Sunday morning or even on a Thursday night and think it's enough. We can't. I think it was, was it Spurgeon that said, I don't go, I, don't, I pray, I, don't, I, I, I never start. What, what, hold on, sorry, Greg. Come on, where's my track of thought? Um, I don't go a minute without praying or an hour without praying. He prays all day. It's, about, it's not about, we need to speak to God all the time. We can't just say, okay, let's go pray every hour on the hour. No. We ask God about everything. We speak to Him all throughout the day, every decision, every question. When we see we're out of sorts, we stop, we pray. When we feel we're not ourselves, we stop, we pray, we shift ourselves. Guys, you're not in control of your emotions. None of us are. When you're feeling emotional, or you're feeling a bit weird, or you're feeling like you're moody, go and pray. I promise you, it'll shift like this. I know. I'm, I'm a human. I know. It happens to me. I'll be moody and Roxas say, what's wrong with you? Nothing. <laughs> She's like, you're not yourself. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with me. And then a few minutes later, and then I'll realize, hold on, maybe there is something wrong with me. And then I'll go and pray. I'll go, I'll stop, I'll go and pray. And it'll shift. And, and it's amazing. You go and pray in the spirit. I was speaking to Anton not so long ago, and we were driving, I was driving to Pretoria, and yes, I, I felt a... I just felt like I was being oppressed. I didn't feel myself. I was feeling like not nice. And I put some worship music on and I started praying in the spirit and just like that, just like that, it lifted. And it's actually, it's, it's funny. You, you almost think it's funny. It's like, like God's got a sense of humor because he says, just pray. Just pray. It's that easy. Oh, we're ready. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. It'll 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 be added unto you too, Dean. Amen. In Jesus' name. The posture of the church is not just trying to hold on to Jesus with a wish and a whim. Once we get our daily bread... He shifts, Jesus shifts, and he tells us a parable centered around midnight. And this is a prophetic alert. We need to grab this. There was a man who went to a house at midnight, and he started beating on the door. That needs to be our posture. We need to stand at the door, and we need to be crying out. We need to be knocking. We need to be shouting, give me bread. That is what he was doing. He was shouting. He was knocking at the door. Give me bread. Give me bread. But not only for me, but for my friends. Notice it's not for the brothers and the sisters or the close ones. It's for the lost. If I speak to, if I speak to those close around me, you know they're my brother and they're my sister. But he spoke about the friends. It's for the ones that he knew, but he didn't really know. Those acquaintances. It's for the ones who haven't met him. For the ones that are far off. For the ones that are oppressed and suppressed and that are captive. He didn't ask for one loaf. He asked for three. For my friends. God wants to get us a burden in our spirits for the lost world. So that we can ask for those three loaves and he can give it to us. That's why I put those little pamphlets at the door today. And I encourage you to take them. Because those can be your three loaves. There's five tickets. You can get five. Amen. In Jesus' name. God wants us to get it. And then, you know, we need to ask. We need to ask. We have friends that are looking for bread, friends looking for something real, something authentic, looking for honesty and truth and integrity, looking for something that's tangible. You can't say, oh, that guy goes to church, but then look what he does. That's being a hypocrite. Does that draw people to Jesus? No, it turns them away. People are looking for something real. Friends are looking for people who can be pluses in their lives, ads. Greater, what is that? How does that sign go in maths? Yeah, less than or greater than. Yeah, yeah. There's a teacher, thank you. 
Sorry, I haven't been in school in a while. <laughs> I've been in Jesus' school, amen. <laughs> Looking for pluses in our lives, not minuses. We don't want people sucking the life out of us like leeches. We want people that can add substance to our lives, sustenance to our lives. Something worth something, something that is tangible. And I'm going to decree and declare that those sort of friends are going to start coming our way. Those friends are people who know him. In the midnight hour that we can stand together, those sort of people God's going to start attracting to you. But I want to ask you, are you ready? Are you going to have something to give to them? Because they're going to come desperate. In the midnight hour, they are going to come to you desperate. Are you going to have something to give? Are we going to be ready as a church? Are we going to have bread? Is Gator Revival Church going to have bread enough to give? We don't just want to be another church where people come in and they don't have their lives changed. We want to be a church like we were this morning when you can feel the tangible presence of God. Jesus said, I am the life. I am the bread of life. I can fulfill that hole in your soul. Everything that is missing in your life, I can fulfill to the full and overflow. That empty feeling. I wanted to play that song. <laughs> that empty feeling. It's from, uh, from Top Gun. <laughs> He can fulfill that empty feeling. That empty feeling that alcohol can't take away, that drugs can't take away. I am the one who will fill that hunger in your soul. And I need a people that will pound on the door. I need a people who will knock without ceasing and saying bread, bread, bread. People that will call out and say bread. God, I need more. I need more of you in my life. Can you see this guy? He's knocking at the door. The dogs are barking. The lights go on. Granny wakes up. What's going on? What's going on in her 90s? And you hear this guy at the door. Doof, doof, doof. And he's shouting, bread, bread, bread. This guy's knocking the door down. What's the urgency? What's the urgency? What's the urgency? What's going on? It's the midnight hour. And if we don't have bread, our friends are going to be lost. If we don't have bread to give them, they're going to go hungry. You might think it's only up to the pastors. It's only up to the prophets to make sure they get there. But it's not only our job. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses. You and you and you and you. Each and every one of us will be his witnesses. Jesus said that you will be my witnesses. And I will fill you until you overflow. overflow. We need to pray. We need to ask. We need to seek and we need to knock. We need to ask Jesus and he will pour out his spirit on each and every one of us. If you don't ask, you won't receive. If you don't knock, the door will not be opened. When you receive enough, in turn, you will have to give because you can't carry everything that he has to give you. When God starts pouring out into you, that's, that's, that's something that just overflows from the inside. It's like sometimes you walk into a service like this and you want to walk out and you just want to tell everybody about Jesus. Or you hear a sermon or you, or you listen to a worship song and he just overflows. We need to be unashamed and unashamed, unafraid of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. God wants to overflow in every area of your life. Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use it, it will be measured back unto you. How much will you activate your faith? How much will you pour out? When you receive and you start to pour out, more will be given to you. Because God will only give you enough. He'll give you He'll give you a little bit, and then he, he, he waits to see if you're going to use it. Remember the story about the talents. Will you use it? Will you use what he is giving you? He wants to give you more. He wants to overflow in your life. But will you use what he's already given you? In the midnight hour, when we have bread, we need to stir ourselves up from slumber. We need to wake up. Everybody say, I'm here. Yeah. Everybody say, I'm knocking. I'm knocking. Amen. Yeah, yeah, klop. 
<laughs> the ten virgins, remember they were clean. We read in Matthew 25, 1 to 5, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and they took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. All ten of them had to be awakened from their slumber. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. This is your wake-up call. I'm here to tell you this morning that we need to wake up. We have to get a prayer life. We have to make time for Jesus. We can't spend 10 hours on Instagram and on Facebook. You know that there's that thing on your phone that tells you how much time you waste? tells you how much time you're on social media. We need to make sure that we give Jesus enough time. The only way that we can turn a generation around is through prayer. The only way that we can turn South Africa around is through prayer. The answer is not in politics. The answer is not in government. The answer, answer is not in intellectuals. It's not in technology and it's not in education. The answer is getting on our knees. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal them from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Come on, somebody. Revival is coming to Gateway Revival Church. Revival is coming to Burdell and to South Africa. And revival is going to start with each and every one of us. This is holy ground. The train of his robe does fill this temple. This shall be a tabernacle unto the Lord. We need to cry out to him in the midnight hour. Everything happens in the spirit before it happens in the natural. We need to pray first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto you. If you sow a seed and that person doesn't want to hear your witness, your prayer for them will go and get into their car. Your prayer for them will go and get into their house. Your intercessory prayer will go and get into those drug houses. Your intercessory prayer will go behind prison bars. Your intercessory prayer will go into the ICU. Your intercessory prayer will go beyond division in families. An invisible force of heavenly angels will be surrounding you. An invisible force of heavenly angels surrounds your property. You know how many times people ask me, is it safe there on the plot? Honestly, people that stay in town, people that stay in complexes. Is it safe there? Oh, no, it's dangerous there on the plot, eh? I said, no, it's not dangerous on the plot. Because I know there's angels standing with flaming swords on every corner. The host of angel armies are standing around this property. Why? Because we pray. Because we put God first. Everything happens in the spirit before it happens in the natural. We need to pray. We need to invite. If, you, if you've been inviting people to church and you've been inviting them to church, then stop inviting them. And go and pray for them. Because soon enough they will need you. Soon enough they will come to you for help. Soon enough, when that midnight hour comes and, God forbid, tragedy hits their lives, they'll come running to you. They'll come running to you for help. That pride will go out the window. You know what I found funny is Jesus taught, and he said, give me this day my daily bread. Pray for our daily bread. And then he says in Luke eleven five, and he said to them, which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. And he has this guy and he's just speaking about give me one loaf. Give, just get enough for yourself. And then, then he says, no, 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 go back now and ask for three. Because he isn't just thinking about himself. He's thinking about others. He's thinking about the lost harvest. We need to start asking God for more. 
More than enough. More than our vats can even contain. God wants us to have abundance. He wants us to be overflowing so that we can pour out into the kingdom. God wants to build us and establish us even in our businesses as kingdom finances so that we can prosper, so that we can have abundance, so that we can have more than enough so that we can overflow. Amen. Amen. When Jesus comes, we go. And the Holy Spirit goes with us. The restrainer goes with us. We need to be happy that we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of each and every one of us. Hell hell may want to destroy your family, but there is a restrainer living on the inside of you. He is the mighty ghost of heaven. He has the power to do what man cannot do. He is your protector. He is your provider. He is your comforter. He is your healer, and he lives on the inside of you, and he dwells in this place, and he is here this morning. One loaf meets my needs, my daily bread, but at the midnight hour we need more let me be full of you Lord give me those three loaves so that I can overflow to my friends it's the midnight hour that the world needs more of Jesus than ever before we need to be knocking at that door we need to be spending more time with him than ever before we need to intercede for our friends and for our family Jesus said in Luke 11 verse 8 I say to you those he will not rise, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend. But because of his persistence, he will rise and give him what he needs. Because of his persistence, we give up too easily. I said this on Thursday night, we give up too easily. Corey once said, you know, we, when we pray and worship, like some of you might have been sitting here this morning and listening to that last song, you're like, wow, this is long. When's this going to be over? Because we give up too easily. Our lives are so fast. Instant access to information. Instant jump in your car, go to spa. Back in the day, bud, you might even have to saddle up a horse. Back in the day before that, you had to walk to get anywhere. Do you remember those little doves that you had to tie the little letter on? Now it's instant. What's that? Instant, instant. And then we we get agitated when people blue tick us and they don't reply. (laughs) Oh, they're rejecting me. What's wrong? Well, they're not replying. Something's wrong. Something has to be wrong. They're not replying. Something has to be wrong. We do that. Instant, instant, instant. Everything's way too quick, guys. We need to slow down. We need to slow down. We need to spend more time with Him. It's because we need to be persistent in our prayer. We need to, we need to keep pressing. We need to keep knocking. We need to fight harder. We need, as I was saying, Corey said, we need to press past the snake line. We need, when we're climbing the mountain, when you want to get to the top, there's a, there's, a, there's a part that they call a snake line. Or I know when the air gets thinner as you're climbing a mountain, you start struggling to breathe. But, even, but then your body acclimatizes. But that takes time, doesn't it? Now, as soon as the air gets to you, you say, ah, oh, we're a bailout now. This is too hard. This is the generation that we are dealing with. Everything is too hard. It's too much effort. We need to put in the effort. Anything worth anything is going to take a bit of effort. We should, be say, we should be saying, pray, and you don't, well, this is what we do say. Yeah, we should be saying, pray, and you don't have to worry. Not worry, and then maybe you'll pray. Because isn't that what we do? We worry first. We worry first. We look at all the problems first, and then we decide maybe to pray about it. After we've stressed our hair out, and we've stressed ourselves into bed, we're into a corner and we're feeling depressed and lonely. It's what we do. You know, when you go through something or you face a difficult situation, the first thing we should do is pray. But what do we do? No, wait, I can sort this out. I got this. I can handle this. We'll try and sort things out ourselves. Let me call the doctor. Let me call Tani Sunny there down the street quickly. She'll know what to do. Instead of asking God. If there is any God in you, the first thing that we should do is pray. The first thing we should do, the first word that should come out of your mouth is Jesus. 
Jesus, what do I do? In the name of Jesus, I pray that, Lord, you will give me the strength. What should I do in the situation? God knows the end from the beginning. We need to get more spiritual. We need to get hold of those three loaves of bread so that we can have something to offer. When we move into the position of intercessory prayer, everyone, the singer, the pastor, the prophet, the barista, the chad, when we move into that position, God will lower down the bread. When we start praying, God will lower down the bread. We need to knock and not stop knocking. We need to press in and seek his face. We need to pray like we've never prayed before. Some of us are praying and it sounds like this. We need to be praying and it needs to sound like that. We need to be knocking down that door. We need to get violent. That's like Anton would say. We need to get violent. We need to pray aggressively. We need to pray harder, guys. We need to knock and not stop knocking. I'll end with this. Julie, why don't you come up? When we spend time in the presence of God, His character becomes our character. Before my mom passed away, I used to go and sit in her office just for the sake of sitting in her office. The one day I can remember, she actually said to me, What are you doing? I said, I'm just sitting here. When you spend time within the presence of God, His character becomes your character. I would sit and I would listen. I would listen to her work. I would listen to her not even have to open up a file to know what product she's selling. I would, I would, uh, she would know the prices of, of everything. I would just sit and I would listen and I would admire her. I would admire how efficient she was. When we sit in the presence of God, we can admire Him. We can admire everything that He does for each and every one of us. His presence... His character will become our character. His ways will become your ways. You are who you surround yourself with. If you surround yourself with pigs, you're going to become a pig. If you surround yourself with lions, you can roar like the lion of Judah. It's in the midnight hour. This is the midnight hour. And guys, we can't give up. We cannot give up praying. We need to pray without ceasing. And that's the miracle in the story. So many people don't even realize that they don't have what they need in the midnight hour. They've grown cold. They've grown lukewarm. There is no prayer in the home. There is no prayer in the family. There's no prayer during the week. This man realized that his friends were coming and they were on a journey. And that he didn't have what he needed. We need to wrestle like Jacob did. He didn't give up. He didn't let go. When the angel said to Jacob, let me go. Under his breath he said, I'm sure. I'm sure the angel was saying, I hope you don't. I hope you don't let me go. Because if if you'll hold on. If you'll say, bless me one more time. Then he would bless you. and, And your name is going to be changed from Jacob to Israel which means prince of God and you're going to be given power with God and favor from men God wants to pour that out into each and every one of our lives you're going to be crippled before you're going to be crowned Joseph there's going to be a pit before there's a palace and the question is will you hold on through the crippling to get to the crowning will you hold on in the pit to get to the palace Because if we keep banging on that door, if we keep wrestling, even though we may go through a tough season, even though it may be hard, you will be crowned and you will see beauty for ashes and God will turn that battle around. We need to get into a place of desperation. Do you want to see change in your life? 
Do you want to see change in your situation? Do you want to see change in your finances or in your business? It's normally when we're down low, when we're in the valley, when we're in the desert. That's normally when we cry out to God. Let's realize this morning that now is the time. Even though you might be sitting here this morning and you might be on top of the mountain. But it's whether we're in the valley or whether we're on top of the mountain, we need to cry to God in every season. Because we don't know when the midnight hour is coming. We don't know when Jesus is going to come coming back. Could be a minute from now. Could be midnight tonight. We don't know, but He is coming. We need to be crying out to Him this morning. He wants to come in and He wants to change your situation. Come and open the door. We need to knock so that He can come and open the door. Because we are knocking, He is faithful. He says, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Amen? Amen. 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 Dean, why don't you bring up the box? I'd like us just to sow a seed into this this morning. If you want God to come into your situation, put it on on the floor, the Dean, sorry. We need God to intervene into our every situation. Why don't you sow a seed onto the altar this morning? And then I want us to pray. Thank you. I know God wants to do something for each and every one of us this morning. He wants to ignite. He wants to fan the flames. He wants to ignite something on the inside of you so that you get a desire for that intercessory prayer this morning. God wants us to be desperate for Him in every area of our lives. And once you guys have come up, why don't you just stand there at your seats. When we pray this morning, I want you to pray like you mean it. And I just want you to pray after me. I want you to pray like you mean it. Pray from your heart. Seriously. Pray from your heart. The Lord wants to come in. He wants to change your situation. All we need to do is keep knocking. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place this morning. Can we pray? Father, we thank you for everything that you are doing for us. We give you honor and praise and glory this morning in Jesus' name. You are worthy. Your name is mighty to be praised. We decree that you are all that we need. We have nothing apart from you. We thank you and we pray that your kingdom come, that your will be done in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name. Father, we seek your face this morning. We pray for an awakening in our hearts, in our families, in our businesses. Lord, bring revival to our lives. Father, I stand at the door and knock and knock and knock. I am desperate for you to open the door for me. I am desperate for a touch of heaven in my life. Lord, I pray that you would change my spiritual position this morning. Lord, that you would shift me from passive to active, from slumbering to awakening. Lord, wake me up in my spirit. Move me from accepting the crumbs to desiring solid food. We are desperate. 
Spirit, for more of you, Lord. Father, we want to grow in our intimacy with you. We want to eat of your bread. Father, feed me, fill me, until I overflow. Fill my lamp with oil, Lord. Hold out your hands. Just ask him right now. Ask him to fill your lamp right now. Right there where you are. We need, you need to ask him. I can't ask him for you. You need to ask him to fill your lamp. Father, we want to be like, like the lady with the issue of blood. And Lord, we want to grab onto that hem of your garment. And we're not letting go. We are not letting go this morning. We're not giving up. Lord, we're going to knock and we're going to knock and we're going to knock and we're going to knock until you open that door for us because we're desperate for you. We know that nothing is impossible for you, Lord. And we know that you're going to intervene in our very situations. It's not about us. It's not about our situations, but it's about your holy name. You are great and you are mighty to be praised. Give us the strength this morning, Lord, to endure. Father, release your spirit onto each and every one of us. Release your spirit. Julie wants Julie. I've asked Julie to sing a song for us quickly. Chad, why don't you put those lyrics up there, please?
of a thousand generations. You are worthy, Lord of all. And unto you, the slain and risen King, we lift our voice to heaven, singing worthy, Lord of all. Why, yes, praises, Lord of all. Why, yes, praises. I just have one word, a prophetic word for this lady standing here. Can I prophesy over you? Okay. I just hear the Spirit of the Lord is saying that the time of dress rehearsal is over and God is actually revealing you and He's pushing you into the season where people are going to see you. And I just see many boxes that God has given you with many gifts and God is saying that even as she was training in the hiddenness, God is saying it's time for the gifts to multiply. And I just see that even what you have written in pencil all these years, God is saying that He is going to put it now in permanent ink. And I just see that God has given you the ability to hold people's hearts in your hands. And I just see that God is really taking you up the mountain and he's giving you the vision for what has been birthing in your heart right now. And God is saying that the time that you have been hidden is over and done with. And the resistance that you have been feeling has been training for the season that he's pushing you into now. And God is saying that even the lost opportunities, because I see many lost opportunities that has been even going through your feet. Even in previous years, God is saying that your hands has been trained now and you will grip hold of each and every opportunity and he will double the opportunity that's coming your way. And God is saying that he's making you so visible right now in this season that you won't have to go and look for the right people to see you, but that people will see you and find your number and that he will con they will contact you. And I just even see a writing anointing on you and I see a teaching anointing you. I see you with the mic in your hand and God is He's saying, you will be her daughter. And I just speak that over you. I release the leadership anointing over you. And I, I'm prophesying even over your legs. And I'm saying your legs, you are strong enough to carry even the responsibility, the new clock, cloak of responsibility that I'm putting on you, the anointing. I release this anointing of leadership. And I'm pushing you through this effectual door right now that have been keeping you back. And I saw it say, door you will open right now in the mighty name of Jesus. 
And I pray, God, that nothing will hold her back, that the enemy that has tried to hold her back, that he will not come near the boundary lines that you have placed and that you have pushed her now into the right season. I bless her with the mighty anointing of visibility right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I think, uh, Judy, Dave, it's... Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you that you are so faithful, Lord. I just feel I need to do um, like a, not an altar call, but just a call on you. Um, A year ago, the Father gave me um, a revelation that what if you were the temple that had to be rebuilt of which revelation speaks before Jesus can come? And if you are the temple of the Lord and you need to be rebuilt so that his train can fill you and there's something in you that are still broken and that there's still not space for God's train to fill you, I think while Julie just keeps on ministering, just raise your hand and say, Father, I want to be that temple so that your train can fill me so that I can be ready. Jesus. 
Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. Amen. Amen. Julie's going to sing that one more time, but uh, if you guys want to go off, you guys are more than welcome. I know some of you got places to be, but uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you. May He be gracious unto you. May He give you peace and prosperity and help in every area of your life. May you be blessed to be a blessing. May you go forth and make progress this week. We'll see you guys on Wednesday night for prayer, not Thursday night, because this week uh, we were going to do Thursday night. Anton and Cario here. They'll fly in at seven o'clock on Wednesday, so we'll we'll uh, well, hopefully God will have them pray with us on Wednesday night. And uh, yeah, we got a thing that we're going to on Thursday night. So yes, remember next weekend we've got them both see us Saturday and Sunday. So please join us, invite a friend, let's make it a full house and let's make an impact in the kingdom for Jesus. Let's get hungry for that bread, not only for ourselves, but for our friends in the midnight hour. Amen. Amen. Blessings. We love you. Have a good day. Singing Lord.